G'day folks. Well, I scored another freebie from work today. Uh, this is a very ancient two-axis DRO. Even though there is a third axis there, it looks like there isn't even a switch inside there, let alone anything else. So It's a two-axis made by Dynamics Research Corporation, Massachusetts. Uh, two scales. It came off the uh, King Rich Mill. I was originally going to get the mill that it replaced, but they decided they want to use that somewhere else in the shop. But instead they gave me this as a consolation. Uh, this is the... Uh, uh, which axis is that? It was only a 2, so it's the uh, Y axis, and that is the X axis. Because when you're looking at the front of a mill, Y is working, moving the table away from you or towards you. X is moving the table across. And Z is moving the table up or down. So, you'd set one, This, although the uh, machine's got a 3 axis now, this one here only had them on the uh, X and Y. The Z axis, you just Went, went off the original dial but because this thing's such a dinosaur they decided to replace it with a fully programmable Eason ES14 I think it is and it's got some really neat program stuff in it but this one can't even do a uh, dot pitch circle or, sorry pitch circle distance PCD whereas the Eason's you can zero your part in the center then enter its diameter or enter your dot pitch diameter number of holes and everything on the keypad and press the start button or the next button and it'll come up with the coordinates to you for your next hole. So you just dial into zero on all the axis and draw your hole. And press next and you get your next hole. So it's really, really easy. Pretty much idiot proofing for milling machines really. But it makes work faster, easier and even more accurate. I mean, it takes a lot of the, the difficulty out of using a milling machine, having a digital readout, especially a good programmable one like the Eason ES8 or ES14. Really good DROs, and they're only about 600 bucks each. So, without further ado, I'm going to clean these up a bit, mount it up and power it, just to see if they still work. Because these contain glass scales, and I didn't remove this from the machine, they just removed it and tossed it aside. So I want to see if these still work alright. This one feels fine, but this one's wobbling around in there, so I hope it hasn't been wrecked. Alright, we've got power. And this thing was fitted to the King Rich when it was new in 1983, so it's done a lot of work. Hence why everything's covered in a really thick layer of sticky old coolant residue and slideway oil. So, I'm going to zero this up. Now these ones here, you have to actually turn the axis on before it'll clear. You can clear them both at once or one at a time. Now if you leave them both on and you only want to zero one, you're going to clear your other axis and have to reset it. We've caught a couple of new operators out before we got rid of it. But it should be right. So they're zeroed. Let's try moving one of the scales. Yep, that's alright. Yeah, this is so they're using the Z axis instead of the Y. This is supposed to be Y. So at some stage they've probably broken a scale and just swapped them around. Z and Y might have had the same length scales. It's about a 400mm scale. Let's try X. Oh, that's still alright. Up, you know. Yeah, I ought to put this on the turret blade. That's why I've got it. But the scales are pretty physically bulky, so I might have clearance problems on the saddle. Which is the x-axis, I think, on the lathe. This, this uh, x-scale is about 800mm long. But there's nothing wrong with it when it's taken out of service. It's just old. 1983 old. Let's start taking covers off things and have a look inside. That's where the fun stuff is. Oh yeah, and as I was saying before, if you accidentally leave both axes on and say, you want to zero Z, oops, we just lost X as well. Bit of a uh, mess up there. Datum point. We'll step by step. 
inches or millimeters. Yeah, that's in inches, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 1 inch, and that's millimeters. Cool. Most of it still works. It's still a good unit. It just doesn't have the features of the Eastons. Um, I'll work out what all these are anyway. I mean, the owner's manual's still at work. I'll have to pick that up and read through it. And the power switch on it's kind of funky. You'd think it's just push on, but you got to trip it out like that. Yeah, third 1983, model 700. For a pretty decent power supply, if the back of the transformer has to hang out the back of the box, and that's a power regulation transistor. Now, there's different types of DRO scales around. Some of them based on the old digital vernier electronic scale, which is printed circuit on a stainless steel ruler backing. Uh, these are the old-fashioned glass ones, rather expensive for home use, and you could also get some which track a series of ball bearings inside a tube. Uh, I can't remember who the manufacturer of those ones are, but I've never heard of them until recently. But, yeah, we're going to take these apart and have a look inside them shortly. Now, uh, the glass scales sort of if you've ever, ever taken an old inkjet printer apart and seen a strip of plastic suspended behind the head with the fine lines on them, like really, really fine lines going all the way along it, that's the same principle. It has an encoder attached to the head and that strip stays stationary so when the head of the machine moves from a zero point it knows exactly how far across it is. Uh, it's essentially a DRO for a print head and it tells the printer exactly where its head's at and what it's doing. And for the rest of it, I'm just going to take the easy way out and refer you to Wikipedia. Take it with a grain of salt because people can pretty much edit whatever they want on it, but I don't see any reason why anyone would put false information about DROs on. So have a look at that if you're really interested in how they work. And they are fascinating devices and very useful. If you can get one for your home machines, that's even better. Now here's all the fun bits. That's some old school electronics. All the ICs are socketed, and as you can see, one axis is missing. So this was probably a lathe DRO since they're only using X and Z, but there's no LCD panel attached to the back of this board either. A whopping great cap in the power supply though. I don't know what rating it is, but it's big. Like an incoming power filter there. That's obviously a power transistor down there. There's not a lot in it, just one board. But it's enough to run it. But this is, this is 1983 technology, so I've come a long way from there. And there you go. It's got two layers of protective foam, or what's left of it. It's very old, 1983 for polyurethane foam, so there's not much left of it on this side. It's gone all gooey, as it does. But that is the encoder head. The glass is a lot thicker than I thought too. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. And no, I cannot see those fine lines on it. They are very close together. Yeah, even if I zoom right in, you can't see those lines on that scale. Alright, now what we're looking at now is the reading head off the x-axis scale. I removed this to repair the little guide on it. And as you can see in the back there, there's a little mirror. You can see the end of one of the uh, readers there. I suppose you'd call it an um, encoder, actually. They're technically called encoders. You have one on one side and one on the other side now. If you move the scale in one direction, one encoder will send a signal to the box and it will count up from its zero point. If you move it back, the second encoder will send the signal to the box and it will count down. And all it's doing is counting the fine lines on the glass. And there's not really much to this. It's got two little encoders in there that read 
the lines on the glass. It's quite a fragile little assembly, but I had to repair and push this back in. It came out. Actually, this one. Even that one's drifting out a bit. You can see it's sitting down. It's been pulled out. But that's the reason why the whole thing was floating around. Alright, well the x-axis scale isn't too bad either. Just because it was taken off and then tipped upside down, all this crud fell onto the grass. So I've got to clean that somehow. Hopefully the etching's on the back, not the front. But, yeah, all this foam's gone to shit. Especially up in there. Trouble is, when somebody cleans the bloody mill with an air gun, it pushes all the crap up into the DRO scales. One thing I never do is use compressed air to clean a machine that has sensitive parts or anything like that. If you're going to use air on a mill, use it very sparingly. Like, use it to push stuff out of the T-slots or just clean the vice under low pressure. But never blast the whole thing. Like, some people just hose it down and blow everything off because it's a quick clean and then sweep the floor. But the problem is they're pushing stuff into here, they're pushing it into the leads for the speed screws. Um, they're pushing it under the table, into the slides, into the spindle. You're pushing coolant into the spindle. Yeah, don't use compressed air on machines, unless you really know what you're doing. But, that head looks alright. The reason this is wobbling around is because that little keeper there has come loose. In there. But this can easily be rebuilt and fixed up. Uh, very sensitive equipment though. I'll take this one apart and reseal it before I install it too. Particularly along this top edge where the oil's starting to seep through. But apart from that I'd say this thing's going to be more than serviceable. It's a very robust unit. Uh, built well in America. <laughs> good American quality. Good unit. It served served since before I was born. I was born in 1985. I'm 24 now. This thing's two years older than me, so 26. That's pretty old. That'll do for now. I'll quickly put the cover back on this and store it. Thanks for watching.